guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are installing a SLR angle kit onto the C5 Corvette. While I'm in there, I'm also going to be putting extended studs on because I have my new wheels out. I got tires mounted and we're going to put the extended studs on so I can put my spacers on and then I can finally put these wheels on. But the exciting thing is we're doing the angle kit today. So to do it, we're gonna have to take, for the rear, the upper and lower ball joints out. We're gonna have to undo the real trailing arm, and then we're gonna have to take the rotor and the caliper off. And then we're gonna have to pull this entire hub off the car, take this big nut off, and then we can take the actual hub bearing out, and then we can press out the studs and put the new extended studs on. For the front, Similar process, but you can actually knock the studs out. Um, if you're not doing extended studs and you're just replacing normal size studs, you can just knock these out and then there's actually a spot right here on the inside on the front that you could put them in. But because we're doing extended studs, I have to actually do the exact same thing and take the entire hub off. So you have to do upper and lower ball joints. You have to do your front tie rod. And then you also have to do the caliper and the rotor. And then from there, we'll be able to take the hub off and then we will be able to separate the wheel bearing from the hub. And then we can hammer out these studs and put in the new ones. Relatively simple job. You're only gonna need a couple tools to get it done. Only a few. Only a few tools. <laughs> like five, maybe five. I actually rented a inner tie rod, I don't know, like wrench, so. This makes the job a lot easier. I recommend you rent one of these from your local auto parts store. I also sucked it up and I bought some upper and lower ball joint separators because this just makes the job way easier than just hammering on stuff. All right, let's get into it. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It lets us know that you guys like the videos and it motivates us to make more. So now that I have the caliper rotor off, I'm going to pop out the tie rod and then I'm going to do upper and lower ball joints. some more of your special sauce. This is the best nut and bolt lube in the world. Bryce introduced me to it and it's honestly changed my life. It smells good too. Ha, another victory. Feels good. we got the entire front knuckle off. So now let's take it to the bench and separate the wheel bearing from the front knuckle. Three Torx bolts. Front knuckle, which we will have to modify later. So now we're gonna pound out the old studs, put new studs in. Get it on the side here where you have clearance on the side of the wheel bearing where there's nothing behind it. Now again, this is a wheel bearing, so you don't really want to go crazy with this. You just want to be nice to it. Support under the flange. That's a good idea as well. Support <laughs> the, what is this, the flange? What is that called? Let's see this hub. So, here's the hub with the extended studs. Obviously much longer. So, let's see if this still work. So yeah, that this time we just hammered it in. So I'm probably gonna do that for the back too. 
because when you do the lug nut method, you do have a chance to yield this material and stretch it as well as damage the threads. So that worked pretty good. So that's done. So now we can move on to the next step. Angle kit. Yes. So let me show you the angle kit. So this is what you get from SLR is you get this bracket here that bolts onto the front knuckle and then you get, you know, this has the outer tie rod on it, an adjustable sleeve, I suppose, and your inner tie rod. So this is the original tie rod mounting location and then this is changing the location of that. So this part of the SLR angle kit where the new tie rod location is actually hits the front knuckle here. So we need to remove material here. So if I lay it on, this is what it's gonna look like when it's bolted on. And you can see that it's actually elevated a little bit right here. So this is the part that we need the clearance. So there's two options. You can either A, grind some material away to get it to fit. And then you can keep your factory tie rod mounting location. So if something happens, if this tie rod breaks, because this is a custom, it's a certain length from SLR, so it's different. You could go and buy one from your van, from a local car. What are you saying? I don't know. I'm just rambling. You just Basically, cut it off. You, have you don't a need choice it here. You can keep this, and a lot of people keep them. I'm just gonna cut this entire outer tie rod mount off of the knuckle, so then we can get this one to fit. Cutting this off. Going with the sawzall, huh? No it's die gonna, grinder? It's gonna cut through this quicker than anything else. Should we time you? No. This Olympic. Is a, this is a long cut. Olympic 97 Corvette knuckle cut. Almost full charge. Sorry neighbors. It was quite the cut. So now we got that notch cut out and we're looking good. So now I'm gonna assemble the front knuckle with the new SLR angle kit. So this bolt is the longer bolt in the kit and it's actually used to replace one of the three torx bits that we took out and it helps hold the wheel bearing in place. But you still reuse two of the other ones. The torx spec for these is tight. When you get it all back together, this is what your new front knuckle will look like. That's all our angle kit bracket on the back extended studs and the wheel hub is bolted back in. So now we're gonna put this back into the car and we're gonna start taking the inner tie rod out so I can replace it with the inner tie rod that came with the SLR angle kit. I got the front knuckle bolted in, everything's tight. Now it's time to take out the it's stock inner tie rod. So I already loosened this, I'm gonna take this off. I took the clamps off the boot. There's a clamp on the front and back of the boot. So the boot is off, and then now we can see the inner tie rod. Uh, don't forget that when you do this, you can actually turn the steering rack to pull the rack this way so everything's easier to access. Push that plastic piece off of it so I can get to it, and then we'll use the inner tie rod tool to take this off. And then if you apply just a little back pressure this way, it keeps the clip from pushing into the car and falling off the inner tie rod. This is the hard part. Oh, doctor. There you go, that's what an inner tie rod looks like. Don't need that. So now we have our new one. 
from SLR. So I'm gonna take this off. So I need to get fit the boot over it again. I'm going to remove the old plastic thing the bob. I'm also gonna remove the clip. Sauce it up. There we go. Get your other key. Too big. And now we're gonna tighten it back on. Mark, you can stop filming. Can you actually run the rack in? So I'm, when I tighten this, I'm actually gonna have Marcus run the rack back in because I don't want to bend the shaft and put any force on it. So in the kit comes with these plastic spacers. You put this just on the inside of the shaft, just like that, right behind the inner tie rod. And this limits your angle. So for example, when you turn the wheel, you put the wheel on, like I, I did this on the other side and I already checked for clearance. I'm actually hitting this brake duct in the front of the car bar, show off. At full lock, this way, like the way the knuckle is right now, everything's fine. But when I turn in, the wheel is actually hitting this brake duct here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But you use these to limit your rack, basically. So I have one on the other side to test my angle, and I want as much angle as possible. So I'm only gonna put one of these in. All right, slid the boot back on, so now I'm gonna put this middle piece in. So actually, I have to screw this piece in too, so I'm not gonna, I don't wanna go as far as I just did with it. So I wanna make sure I get good thread engagement on both ends. There, there we go. So now when I tighten it, I'm taking thread in on both ends to make sure I get good thread engagement on this. And this is obviously your toe adjustment in the front. So I'm gonna run this in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, I use that side, I'm gonna put the wheel straight and then I'm just gonna arbitrarily kinda get the wheel straight. Um, and then once I get the tires on, I'll actually be able to do a rough toe adjustment and then I'll get an alignment once this is all done. So Bryce went in there and cut the brake duct out. So now with the angle kit, the wheel doesn't hit anything when I go lock to lock. So that's good. So now the front is done. Even got the space around there and we can move on to the back. If you wanted to tighten your e-brake, you have this black plastic piece here and you take a hammer and a screwdriver and you just slowly rotate it and it expands the shoes. So, so you gotta play this balancing game where you shove the axle out and then you can get the nut off the lower, lower ball joint. Transmission. Thank you, Bryce. Finally got the rear out. Finally got the rear out, thanks to Bryce. That, that was... upper, lo that upper uh, control arm was fighting us. Yeah, the upper bullet ball joint was a bitch, but Bryce got it. So now we can take the wheel bearing off of the rear knuckle. Brake. I'm just gonna set it on here so I can remember relatively what orientation it goes in. Damn, crusty.
slide in this axle. Yeah. the jack under here is there anything else you'd like someone else to do today <laughs> i just don't want to stay in the thank you right here. Here? right here yep go ahead take her up go ahead keep going yep up we go a little bit more stop you can lower it thank you Okay. Yep, you can drop it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is that. Where's the big ball? Do it for the channel. Just put the teeth marks right here. Yeah, right just the eat it. <laughs> what happened there, Steve? It's going to be so guys. slow with a 225 tire on it. Doing God's work, Steve. Torque to spec. What is it called, Mark? A star wheel. So you want to adjust that to where the rotor slides on and, and it's just snug with the brakes. Yep. Yes, yeah, so we're done. Yeah, and I already changed my dampening settings and my shock, so. Extended studs and, and angle kit install, done. Let's see what this car looks like with the wheels guys on. Couldn't have done it without you. Bang. We finally finished the angle kit install. So now I wanted to show you guys after an alignment exactly how much angle we get. So I believe the stock Corvette has about 24, 25 degrees of steering angle. With the SLR angle kit, we should have about 48 to 50 degrees of angle. So this is what it looks like with the car on the ground. I wish I took a video of what it looked like with the stock steering angle, but you can tell that this already visually looks like a lot more than stock. I've been driving with the angle kit and the alignment for a while now and I am super happy with this angle kit. It was, you know, roughly only 500 bucks and you get a, a crap ton of angle for 500 bucks. And if you ask me, I thought it was relatively easy to install as well, so. Um, the amount of user input on the steering wheel is like halved. So if, to make a normal turn with the stock steering angle, you'd have to go maybe 90 degrees. Now you're only doing 45 degrees. So 
That's really nice. So I'm excited to take this out on track. We have a drift day this Thursday, so we have a drift video coming up, so you guys will be able to see this angle kit in action. The vet and the Mustang will be making it to the, the drift event if it doesn't get rained out. But um, I've drifted it a couple times with the angle kit, and it is so easy to keep control of the car because now to recorrect a drift, it's just shimmying the wheel, you know, a couple degrees instead of having to really rotate it. So. It made the car even easier to drive. So I'm super, super happy with the angle kit. You get a ton of angle, and this is what the vet looks like with the, the new wheels on. So that's what the leading wheel looks like. And this is what the trailing wheel looks like. It's super sunny out here, so it's a little hard to see, but. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit of a long one, but please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It lets us know that you guys like the videos and it motivates us to make more. So we have the Woodward Dream Cruise coming up. That'll be a video. I have a Magnaflow exhaust coming in. That'll be a video. We have a track day on Thursday. That'll be a video. And yeah we got a lot going on guys so stay tuned oh and i almost forgot i also bought an hp tuners kit the mpvi2 plus so i'm going to learn how to tune this car learn how to use the hp tuner software and i will also be making a video about hp tuners and the corvette soon so all right now the video's over later <laughs>